You have a process. I have a process. We all have processes. So let's talk about mine in this episode of Horrible Writing. That will that never, never work. work. You can't, can't push, push us. us. Seriously? No, don't. 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 Oh, my God. That's bad. You, you probably, probably should find other hobbies. You ever, you ever learn, learn how to spell? Be happy. Quit while you're in the Don't bother me. I've seen better people. Do you really want to do that? And my third grade. Get it up. Welcome to Horrible Writing, the rawest, most candid, in-your-face writing show on the interwebs because none of us have time to suck. Let's do this. Hey everybody, Paul Sadie, your host of Horrible Writing. I hope this finds you well. So, as we approach the middle of January, or as we reach the mid- middle of January, I've often had questions about how I can produce as much as I have and as much as I can. And in the Horrible Writing Facebook group, if you're not there, come join us, Horrible Writing, Writing Support Group. I've had a Monday event where we talk about our weekly goals. The purpose of that event is to encourage and inspire and keep people accountable to themselves. It's a behavior that works if you're concerned about accountability and you know you need it, and don't we all? But in the process of doing that, it came to my attention that it can be discouraging for me to share what my weekly measures are because what I do in a week is what some people do in a year. And that's hyperbolic, but you know, in a month, let's say. So I talked to a wonderful writer, Nicole Rain, by the way, paranormal romance writer. You'll be hearing from her soon. But she encouraged me to talk about my process in an episode because she thought it would help others. So, and I think that's fair because I should not be a guide stick for anyone but myself. No one should. No one should be your guide stick. Now, if you use people's output or production or whatever to inspire and motivate you, great. Do it. But don't ever let that sway the balance into discouragement. So in this episode, I'm just going to walk through my process real quick so that you, if you're even interested, maybe can steal an idea or, or two. And if nothing else, if you're interested you can put into context what I'm able to put out versus what maybe you are. Now, keep in mind that I did. I, I released three books last year, a novel, which was an adaptation of a podcast, a nonfiction book, and a horror anthology. In addition to that, I did, I'm trying to count in my head, three audio dramas, all of which were, well, two of which, uh, two of the three were book-length scripts, uh, you know, long novellas, very, very short novel. I mean, they're right there in that 50,000-word sweet spot, uh, in addition to doing this podcast on a weekly basis. So there's your context. I do work full-time, and I do have a family with kids, and I think that makes a difference for some people. So in that context, let me line out what my processes. Again, steal ideas that work for you. Gauge it against what you want to do for yourself. Whatever works. That's the important thing. Whatever works. So here it is. Every day of the week, I write. Those of you who have been around the show a long time know I have a zero, zero word count day, meaning I don't go a day without doing some kind of writing. Actual writing, you know, for the novel that I'm working on, a short story for my patrons, a script for one of the podcasts or a future podcast, or even outlining. I include that in the creative process. So creatively, I have to do writing every single day. Now, my work day starts at 730. 
and I have no commute. I telework. I work from home. It's one of the greatest things that has ever happened to me. So if you don't have that luxury, and it is a luxury, also keep that in mind because I don't have to worry about getting dressed on time, uh, getting the car warmed up, you know, getting on the highway before traffic bogs down. All of those things are not a concern to me at all. So I get up, I set my alarm at 4.45. It used to be 4.58. I'm challenging myself, but I don't want to get crazy. Still call it the 4.58 crew or club. I've got one of those natural alarm clocks. If you don't have one, invest in one. I've only had it since Christmas. It's absolutely amazing. It will, so it's shaped almost like an egg that's sliced lengthways in half. And white light, red light, blue light, violet. But I've set it to white light. And at 426, the white light comes on slowly. So it starts brightening the room. And then at 445, I've got it set to natural soundscape where they obviously record it out in a field somewhere or in a forest, you know, wind blowing through trees or or tall grass. You hear birds in the background. And I'll tell you what, by the time that clock portion goes off, I'm much more awake. So I'm ready to go when I get downstairs. I get my coffee and I sit at the computer. Now, as I'm still a little groggy, I've got all my things open, obviously. And before I start writing, I go over to Amazon and I enter in the sales ranks for my books and I update my spreadsheet. It gives me a chance to get my brain uh, aw- woken. And sometimes it encourages me. Sometimes it discourages me. Like, i.e., recently, I'm going to do an episode about holiday, post-holiday lessons learned. And then I start writing. And I write until I have to get to work again, because I have that luxury. So I write from roughly five o'clock every morning till about seven 15, two hours and 15 minutes. I do walk around, stretch and take a break, especially with the ruptured Achilles. I'm static at my, in my chair, but I'm at the eighth week. So I can start standing this weekend by the time you actually hear this episode. When I stand, I can write a lot more. I use dictation at that part. So that's another part of the process, typing versus dictation. I will type when I'm off location, when I'm not at home. When I'm at home, I close the door. I turn on YouTube, put the headset on. I find some ambient stuff. If I'm writing horror, I put on some dark drones or stuff like that. If I'm working on fantasy, I'll go look up some Celtic music and put, you know, just let that play. And I just plug and plug and plug and keep going. I try to stay off social media, which is why those of you in the group rarely see me post in the morning. And if I do, obviously Monday and Fridays, I quickly disappear after posting because I'm back to writing. And I do that every single workday, weekends. I just get up naturally at a natural time and do it. And I don't necessarily work as hard in the weekends as I do during the week because there's got to be a balance with life. And again, there are days when I will write 50 words and I'm okay with that because I wrote. So boom, behavior checked and I got it accomplished. And that's what I'll do. I don't edit at night. Usually I don't really do anything at night throughout the day. I might do a little editing, but right now I'm trying to figure out Amazon ads Once I get that mastered and finish the class, then I'm going to move on to newsletter ads and things like that. Learn as I go. I'm more worried about making content right now. Maybe that's a silly thing. I don't know. But while I have a job that allows me to telework, I'm going to make as much content as I can. And you know what? If they don't sell for five years, that's my own fault, but I've got to set my priorities. So during the day, I will do, I will dabble in editing or maybe some quick writing sessions while I can, 15-minute breaks, lunch hours. Now, that's where you can increase your word count on a daily basis by taking advantage of those times. Carry around a notebook with you. Go outside of the building and jot down stuff. Some of you, Cheyenne Bramwell is one. Uh, Amanda Ward, I believe, did too in the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group Facebook page. Shared pictures of the new recorders that they bought. 
more podcasters coming into the fold. Awesome stuff, but you don't need it to podcast. You can write by dictating. Dragon Natural Speak is has a has a um narration dictation option. So you literally can take that file that you recorded on your one hour lunch. You got like 40 minutes of dictation done, and you can open a Word document, open Dragon, do that uh dictation transcription. Sorry, I was using the wrong word, and it will put it all into that Word document. And you can, you know, move it over to whatever you need. Tons of word counts you can get done. And for all of those of you who are telling me you can't dictate, yes, you can. It just takes practice. Don't tell me why you can't do something. Tell me how you can, right? If we want to be, we want to reach our writing goals, we need to flip the paradigm and get the right mindset. How can we? No more why we can't. How can we? So that's one way to do it. So that's my daily process. Like I said, morning heavy writing, dabble in editing whenever I get a break. At night, I usually don't do anything. I spend time with the family or I watch comedies or something to give me brain dead time. I've recently taken up whittling. And I've got a number of things in the works all at once. That's the next step of the process I wanted to talk about. I don't have just one thing on the plate. I can't. Because of the way I built stuff. I don't necessarily recommend that. Uh, but I've, I'm producing this show, obviously. We're getting ready to produce the stories we tell. Make sure you go subscribe today. It's going to be a lot of fun with everybody in the Horrible Writing Writer Support Group uh, contributing to that in our monthly contests. And then Diary of a Madman. I'm producing that. I've also got another audio drama, which will be the only audio drama I've written that will come out in 2019. Subject found season three probably won't because of a funding issue, but those are always in the works and then the book. So I'm working on the scales now. I have Rip, which is the novelized adaptation of the second season of Subject Found that's right behind it as soon as the scales is done. And then the third season of Subject Found Adaptation is right behind that. My thinking, again, like I told you in the New Year episode, was if I can get at least those three books out, I can walk away. If I decide, I can walk away from Subject Found with peace of mind, knowing I told the stories that I had promised, even if one of them never makes it to audio drama form. In in the middle of that, I also have short stories. So each month on my Patreon patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading. If you want to help out, um, I give my patrons short stories to include a, an audio drama that's exclusive to their, them. I'm writing another audio drama, a fantasy medieval high fantasy type stuff that will be exclusive to them. So they'll get two and then a short story of various length. It used to be a dedicated two stories a month, but I've changed that because of the exclusivity of the audio dramas. There's just way too much labor that goes into those. And I still want to do the other stories because it keeps me fresh. And that's why I have that. So all of these things are moving, but I'm able to keep them in line. Scales, the scales, and the scales. It is the thing I always work on unless I have to knock out a script real quick or a short story. But because I use dictation, again, I can do those very quickly. Uh, One example is you audio drama. It's a choose your adventure, choose your own adventure audio drama. This past week, I wrote and edited the entire episode in one morning, 1500 words, something like that. So short form, but I could get it done. And I work on the editing of those things during the day. Like I said, I'm already working with my editor So I'm primed to hand off the scales to her as soon as it's done, as soon as it's ready. Uh, So target of middle of February, I'll be doing that. So once I hand that off, I'll be pulling rip in and starting the editing and that. And once I get, I need to get through the editing and rip by the time the editor hands the scales back to me. So then I get the scales back from the editor. I get rip edited at least one time, maybe a couple of times, maybe ready for beta readers. 
and then obviously keep that cycle going for all of them. Here's the thing, folks. I share that process with you because most of my free time is taken uh, taken up with a craft, and I have a lot more flexibility than a lot of people do. There are people who work jobs in a factory or or a restaurant or whatever it may be, and they can't pull out a a, a recorder and dictate. They can't pull out a notebook and just say, "Hey, uh, I'm 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 gonna get you your meal when I'm done writing this cool idea down." I get that. I've been there, which is why. I'm not screwing around at this point in my life because I have that flexibility. It may require more sacrifice for you than it does for me. If I could turn back time, those of you in your 20s, I would at this point in my 40s enjoy those video games, enjoy going out, definitely, but balance it more. I wanted to be a writer then, but I was so caught up in just being worn out from work and playing video games for six hours in a night that I rationalized it and I regret it to this day, which is one of the reasons why I'm pushing myself so hard. And I don't want to see that for those of you who don't want that for yourselves. That's something I'm going to talk about in future episodes. So when you see how much I'm putting out and those of you who know how many podcasts I have, please keep that in context. Okay full-time job, family, but the kids are gone. I, you know, my youngest just went to college this year. She just left. So empty nesters. My wife is very active in dance communities. So I go with her and support her sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, Hey, I've got three hours of quiet in the house. And those three hours are spent either screwing off playing, uh, um, which Witcher three absolutely love Witcher three or producing some audio usually because my brain is exhausted by then. So it's about what you're afforded to do. Don't compare yourself to me or anyone else. Compare it to you, but be honest with yourself. You know if you're being lazy about your writing. You say it's a priority, but when you look at your behaviors, write them down for a week at a time, a month at a time, and you go back and you look, did you make writing the priority? And it's okay if you didn't. Don't beat yourself up, but at least be honest with yourself. That's the key. All right. I'm going to call it an episode here. I want to talk about those the holiday Amazon ads impact in another episode. So I'm just going to tease that with you. And I do also have Chris Banks coming up from Pro Writing Aid. We talked about work-life balance. Seems kind of timely, doesn't it? Even though I did this before the holidays. So uh, those episodes are coming up. Until you hear from me again, keep being epic. This has been Horrible Writing, and hopefully after this episode, you suck less than you did at the beginning. I am Paul Sadin, your host, Extraordinaire. You can find me over on the Twitterverse at Writing Horrible and over at paulsadin.com forward slash horrible dash writing. Until next time, suck less.